Life is but a walking shadow, a clumsy actor gesturing on the stage, who only appears briefly and steps off in silence. Auto Apocalypse, the most pathetic fool alive. He is the revered Shiksal overseer. He is a corrupt, bigoted clown. Over centuries, he once sacrificed lives beyond count for his selfish desires, but also overthrew a decadent reign with people's support. He treated humans as pawns and trampled the value of emotion and life, but treasured Valkyries at the front line and prayed for their triumphant return. Commitment and betrayal, friend and foe, truth and lies. No one has ever seen through him, but to Otto himself, his actions only served one purpose. It all began in an afternoon 500 years ago. Though Otto was born in the three houses, he was frail and sickly. He could only craft whimsical inventions, which naturally deprived him of inheritance. His older brothers detested his effort at self-destruction, but no one noticed his inner needs and desires. It was then that a white-haired, blue-eyed girl brightened Otto's cold and dull heart like a ray of sunshine. She praised Otto's work sincerely, expected great inventions from him, and invited him to save the world with her. For the first time in his life, young Otto felt recognized. He could be expected, he could be needed. Since that faraway afternoon, everything he did has gained meaning because of her validation. But the twisted fate would not spare them. The rampant plague and the failed crusade tore the prosperity they lived in apart. Power and force were the perfect fuel for greed turning a shaky faith into the breeding ground for degeneracy. In the turmoil, the lives of the two reached a turning point. Fearing abandonment, Otto chose to disregard ethics and performed experiments on dying patients. He sought findings at all costs. Callan, who could not condone his crime, became a raven at night to spread hope and enact the justice in her heart. But lies were lies. After many operations, Callan discovered the secrets of the human experiments and Otto exposed himself at the last minute. Before the infinite greed of Schicksal, individual will was nothing. Callan was imprisoned. The cold bars separated the two that were once childhood friends yet their minds had already drifted further apart. To Callan, the dignity of life was what she had sworn to defend. To Otto, morality and ethics were only prices to be paid. A loud slap and a conflict of beliefs sent them on completely different paths. Otto knew that in no way could he stop Callan. He accepted it and helped her escape in silence. After everything settled, Otto was given the key to the library. Although Void Archives used the index permission as a bait in an attempt to possess Otto, Otto did not fall for it. He developed technology with pieces of knowledge, and thus a game that would last centuries began. In the days that followed, Otto searched for Callan while continuing his research and experiments. When he heard Callan was in danger in Yai village, he immediately had Oath of Judah delivered, but not the response letter that spoke his loving heart. Meanwhile, Callan sealed the Hersher of corruption in the black box with Oath of Judah, but was severely wounded. She was taken back to Europe by Shiksal for a trial. Callan was faithful and refused to sacrifice for family feuds, and thus was sentenced to hanging. Otto tried everything he could, but it was futile before the church's will. On the day of execution, 
the desperate Otto released Honkai Beast on the execution ground. He planned to take Callan amid the chaos, but he underestimated Callan's resolve. In the end, Callan lost her life when protecting the people. Losing the love of his life painted Otto's world gray again. Resentful, he chased after Callan's shadow. He tried to give this sad story a happy ending as she would have wanted. He sounded the horn of revolution with his wisdom and cleansed the remaining evil with his hands. People sang his accomplishments and soldiers admired his resourcefulness. As cheers of victory echoed through the silent church, Otto could not help but ask himself if this was enough. In the centuries that followed, the hole inside Otto was still agape. The only way to mend it was to revive the love of his life and the holy maid of the people, Kalan Kaslana. In 1496, Otto had no choice but to travel to Shenzhou in search of the legendary Master Phoenix for a chance to revive Kalan. He met the fledgling swordswoman, Li Sushan, and found the reborn Fu Hua. But to his surprise, even an immortal celestial had regrets and could not bring back departed souls. In the end, Otto and Fu Hua made a pact. Shiksal would protect Shenzhou in the powerless Fu Hua's place, and Fu Hua would serve Shiksal as a Valkyrie. In 1952, the first Honkai eruption broke out. Shiksal captured the amnesiac first Hersher and performed three years worth of serial experiments on him, which yielded nothing. Otto even approached him in person to persuade him into succeeding to the Shiksal overseer, but failed. To eliminate risks, Otto decided to wipe out the North American branch that was about to discover Shiksal's ugly truth. He launched Honkai fission missiles at New York, where tens of millions lived. Heroes defending freedom and justice stepped forward and crushed Otto's scheme at the cost of their lives. This led to the independence of anti-entropy. This failure taught Otto to take hold of the power to retaliate Honkai, which led to the Clone Project and the Artificial Stigma Project. In 1972, Otto began running forbidden clone experiments in the hope of reviving Kallan, but the results were not satisfactory. After injecting the cells of Honkai Beast Vishnu, the first living batch of Kallan clones was born. Otto made them fight one another to death at the end of the survival test. Only the individual numbered A310 rejected this absurd order. Her kindness in valuing life and her courage to defy her maker shocked Otto. He took A310 into his family and named her Teresa Apocalypse. Meanwhile, Otto established the Tower of Babylon Laboratory to study artificial stigmata. Countless gifted children were taken from their parents and subjected to inhumane experiments day and night. Insurmountable suffering and hatred against humanity nourished these Honkai vessels. At last, Siren, the second Hersher, was born. Otto mustered Valkyrie troops to subdue the Hersher, dived into her sentience with the help of Fu Hua, and received revelation from the will of Honkai. After many great sacrifices were made, Otto gave the order to launch Honkai fission missiles at Siberia to bury the truth deep beneath the scorched snowfield. Otto's resurrection project gradually took shape due to the guidance from above. For several years, Otto tried to create the most promising clone with Kiana Kaslana and Siren's genes for the second Hersher to possess upon return. He transplanted the core of the second Hersher to the test subject numbered K423. The longing for Cecilia gave her life. After being taken to St. Freya by Himeko, the love she felt and the bond she made helped her learn to love this world and those around her. Watching Kiana move along the path he designed, 
Otto knew when she began to believe she would never be alone was when he could advance the plan. In the illusory Tower of Babylon, the girl's despair and longing for motherly love facilitated the Hersher persona's awakening. Fu Hua took her back to Shiksal. The experiment pod confined her once again. Facing the pod, Otto's eyes only showed a hunger for the Hersher of the Void's power. As Otto injected enormous Honkai energy into K423, Hersher of the Void returned. Otto saved the dying Fuhua and told her his plan. Looking into Fuhua's furious eyes, Otto paused for a short yet long moment and pulled the trigger. Everything went according to his plan. Himeko burned up herself to tear through Siren's will. Kiana's sentience returned to the body of the Hersher. To obtain a Hersher of the Boy who could command the power with human will, Otto trampled emotions and disregarded lives. Otto believed that love and emotional bonds could evoke miracles, but he never respected nor honored them. So far, Callan's revival was only missing a key, Cosmic Juggernaut's beacon. Previously, to reach the imaginary tree that governed how worlds worked, Shiksal cracked the legend of King Arthur and found the key of infinity that offered space travel in the River Thames, but it was incomplete. Durandal passed Pioneer Sue's test by chance and received information and experience as numerous as sand grains in the Ganges. To complete Cosmic Juggernaut, Otto struck a deal with World Serpent's leader. He traded Void Archives for Cosmic Juggernaut's beacon. When the Hersher of Dominance and Hyperion were locked in battle, he took the theater of domination and thousands of cores in secret. At last, the fully prepared Otto returned to the beginning. Collisten, where Shiksal's blood and tears were buried. It would become the end of his long journey. On the other side of the stage, Valkyries had readied themselves as well. Teresa would succeed as the Shiksal overseer and lead the newborn Shiksal toward a bright future. Bronya would shoulder the weight of the Welt name, for the Hersher of Reason's path had stretched to her. Fuhua concluded a feud that spanned centuries, so she could embrace yesterday as a human and open the door to tomorrow. Kiana broke free from the shackles of fate and created a trail of flames that would guide them forward with her friends. Durandal broke through the barrier of Kaslana and earned a new heritage that only belonged to her. Valkyries were eager to settle accounts with Otto. Indeed, they won. Their crushing victory was a heavy blow to Otto. What they did not know was that their growth, their resolve, and even the joy of winning were also part of Otto's plan. What he planned for in the past 500 years was but a bargaining chip to attain death and a new life. After being defeated by Valkyries, Otto broke free from Imaginary's control momentarily. He imbued the world's wedge with all the false god's power to create infinite possibilities for Kallan. As Otto left his last message, his sentience finally dissipated in the still time space. To different people, Otto perhaps means different things. But to Otto himself, all rights and wrongs are transient. He has attained eternal peace. His life as a fool is finally over.